Hello, everyone. This is The Planters. This is Hannah Leader, and I'm Alexandra Kotcheff. Uh, we are so excited to be playing in the Braunschweig Film Festival this year. So honored our, to have our German premiere with such an amazing festival. We've been asked to answer five questions that were specifically geared towards our lovely film. So we're going to go ahead and read them now. Personally, you know, as I've gotten older, unfortunately, I have geared more towards the, the world fucking sucks. I mean, look at this pandemic that's going on. Look at the wars, you know, the violence and all these general things. But my personal opinion doesn't really matter. I mean, obviously, it comes out in the characters and obviously Martha Plant. I think the real world sucks for her, especially in the beginning of the film. But I think as she lets these people into her life, uh, that I think that worldview starts to adjust a little bit. But I would say Martha, when she says that, she was kind of on the nose. I'm not that nihilistic though, or I wouldn't call it nihilistic. I would say that I'm a more of a hopeful person generally, but what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I feel like the real world does suck. And I also feel like it's, beautiful and what makes it beautiful is the world we create within it and and maybe what what we aim to do to make it better uh, I think that's you know the plight of being human it's complicated and it's hard but it's also beautiful and um, you know it's it's all the things That's a really interesting question. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the more that um, we can do our best to communicate, even if our methods of communication are bizarre and absurd, um, I, I'd say that's, that's a good step uh, to take in, in terms of conflict resolution, especially in our personal relationships. Uh, what do you think? Um, I think s this might not be a popular opinion, but it is mine. Uh, I do think violence is uh, necessary in, in certain situations, and especially um, with justice. I think nonviolence is extremely important. Important, however, I do think hand in hand, nonviolence has not like won justice. And so sometimes, if you meet violence, you have to fight back with violence, or you're dead. So. To that extent, I would not like to see a world where violence is the way we get things done. However, in the world we live in, I don't think we can do without it. Might not be right. This is just my personal opinion. I think it's a great opinion. Oh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> I definitely can understand where uh, that question comes from. Uh, I mean, that time period is a, a really interesting one for film. Uh, we weren't, I don't think, intentionally looking at those uh, films of that era to, uh, to make dialogue from our film. However, I love a lot of films from that period. So I don't, Hannah, what do you think? Um, yeah, same. I, I mean, you have, uh, the one that is coming to mind right now is It's a Wonderful Life. I watch that every Christmas time with my mom. And uh, there is a sense of, I don't know if self-importance is the right word, but just kind of the way things roll out of the mouth. It's very dramatic and it's, it's kind of um, big. And I, I could see that in moments in the planters, there is something a little old fashioned, um, especially with some of Martha's and even Richard, I, I think, I mean, Richard played by Phil Paralisi, he also has a, sort of New York theater background um, and certainly must be inspired by those 40s and, and, and 50s classics. So I love that that you could see some of that parallel. Oh yeah, that is interesting, even though when he's like, you know, my heart hurts. <laughs> I see you making those other air conditioning calls. <laughs> like that is very, it's true. Maybe, um, 
I think there's like, I think we're kind of traditional romantics in a way. And that definitely comes, at least in, in regards to that. Yeah. You know, and some of that was in like the 50s. Come on, that's like one of the most traditional eras for a lot of things. Yeah, so. I wonder if your relationship, because it's a little with Richard, the age difference is interesting. It's maybe a little questionable, and, and maybe that inherently created a certain uh, way of speaking to each other that you have to be a little bit more prudent and a little more, uh, I don't know, careful, but also. Yeah, yeah. And, and kind you're not just texting for the hookup like hey <laughs> want, want to get dirty or down got to go talk to you later i don't know what i'm talking about right now but it's yeah a different courtship in a way yeah more traditional i suppose um Maybe you could answer this better. I can't uh, honestly remember the the exact moment that this entered our orbit writing this film. Um, I do recall uh, that it was, uh, I mean, we knew that we wanted Sadie to be uh, exploring uh, issues of faith and doubt and uh, brokenness and am I whole, am I saved, am I, um, forgiven all these questions that you know maybe you have with within your spirituality or within even your family or your friends um, but uh, uh, and obviously with with her faith um, it seemed only normal that it it would be if she was going to be seeing things biblical but I think these visions really represent um, a play on like what's real, what's not real. Um, I know it was your idea to have it be stop motion, if you want to speak to that. Everything was ever, all of our ideas. Like it, it's so I, I don't like, I don't, I don't consider my head, oh, I take credit for that because it was just such an organic process. But um, I definitely like the idea of creating like a third dimension yeah, maybe multi second dimension, but really I, in my mind, it's like a third dimension of um, where Sadie is psychologically going in to di differentiate that from the rest of the, the kind of look of and feel of the rest of the film. And also the stop motion animation, we chose someone who has definitely a style, like that style is his, we can't take credit for that. Um, it's dark, it's um, unpolished, just kind of like our characters in a way. Uh, and so it just felt very fitting for our film and it's one of our favorite bits, our favorite bits in the whole wide world. Yes. Ah, what a question. Well, well, if you're super nice to us, we may one day ship you one of our tins because they are currently sitting in Hannah's garage. Um, however, you know, any tin you can make a planter's tin, just get one of those cookie tins at, you know, uh, one of your big grocery stores and, you know, think of us and think of Jesus in the tin and there you go, it's a planter's tin. So and it's just you and your imagination. If you're particularly interested, you can follow us on at leader Kachef on Instagram and maybe you can DM us and tell us about how much you want a tin and maybe we'll do a giveaway. Oh, that would be so fun, yes. Um, yes, if you wanna, thank you so much for taking the time to, to watch our film. We, you know, it means everything to us, us independent filmmakers, seriously. And if you'd like to know more about the film or you'd like to see the film in Germany, other than at the festival, uh, start you know putting it out on social media twitter instagram all the ways the cool kids get their films out and just start talking about it that's how we'll get there i mean we have a european release gonna come out at some point soon but it's not guaranteed for germany unless you let us know let the world know so thank you again you can go to the plantersfilm.com to find out more information yes anything else hannah to end this whole beautiful conversation off just Donkashin. Donkashin. Donkashin.
Danke schön, darling, danke schön. Thank you for everything you do. That is not the line. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>